And now let's see how we can make a practical use of this technology. All these rays, they're directed outwards. We can record the information about the position of these rays, their direction. And then we can project that information onto some other object. So we'll be projecting the normals from the high poly object onto this violet film. And then from this film, the normals will be projected onto the low poly object. So this is how this technology works. We go. This is where the read apology tool comes in. You take this high poly part and use the red apology tool to reduce the number of polygons. And then you bake a map of the high poly object and get a more naturally looking relief, a more naturally looking model. So. Hi guys, today I'm gonna show you how to bake a normal map in 3ds Max. But first let's find out what a normal is. A normal is a ray that is perpendicular to the surface of an object. Here for example normals are perpendicular to the surfaces of these polygons. And I've created this object that consists of three polygons. It has sharp pronounced edges, it's not smooth, its polygons belong to different smoothing groups or don't belong to any smoothing group altogether. So in 3D Max, we have these polygon smoothing groups. So if we select all the polygons and don't click any of these groups, the surface will remain uneven with sharp bends. If, however, we select all polygons and click let's say smoothing group one, our object will become smooth. It just has a slightly bulging shape. So why is it so? The object consists of three polygons, but it looks like a high poly, beautifully smoothed out object. Well, that's very simple. Let's turn off smoothing group for now, and I'm gonna show you how we can see the normals that are perpendicular to our polygons. So we click the Edit Normals modifier and we see that there are rays coming out of each point. Each square polygon has four rays. These four rays face the same direction as the polygon surface. The refraction of rays in Corona, V-Ray and other graphic engines is defined by the normals. and the position of the normals defines the shape of an object. In this polygon, normals face a different direction. And so now let's see how smoothing works. So let's attach these normals into a single point. We move them together like this. And these two rays as well. And now they're facing practically the same direction. It's as if they're coming out of some average surface that doesn't really exist. But these rays make us believe it's there. The 3DS Max viewport creates an illusion of that plane actually being there. See? So this area here is smooth while this one has a sharp bend. In the perspective view, we select these normals and click Unify. To merge them together, all adjacent normals have formed a single hole that we can shift. Or we can click Break to break them apart. Let's select the normals, click Break, and now all the normals are facing each a different direction. So each polygon has its own individual surface. Now we click Unify again and end up with a, a single surface. So when editing the normals, we're working on a deeper level. If we're already started to edit our normals, 
we might not be able to apply smoothing groups anymore because these groups rely on the information about the normal, see? So there are no selected groups here. We click clear all, but the object is still smoothed out. Let's take some basic object, a sphere. So for example, with the grid turned off, the sphere looks soft and solid. This means either that its points are in the same smoothing group or that its normals in each point all have the same direction. Now let's make sure. So we click edit normals and see that the normals coming out of the same point are indeed facing the same direction. So we select all the normals and then click break. And now each polygon has four normals that are facing the same direction as the polygon. We can select several adjacent polygons and unify them. And so now these normals are facing the same direction. Let's add another one and click unify. So now we've got this smooth object with a fake smoothing effect. This is how all gaming engines work, actually. All 3D graphics uh, programs rely on this technology. That's fundamental. But actually, not all programs have it. There's one program that works a bit differently. Technologies are constantly evolving, after all, but still, this approach is fundamental for the absolute maturity of 3D and gaming software. Now we convert the objects to editable poly. Look what we've got. Without using smoothing groups, we got this field that looks like a single hull. Now, after we've added the normals, let's try to assign smoothing groups. See, nothing's happening. That's because we've already edited the object's normals. And this means that we now need to select Edit Normals Modifier and attach the normals. And now let's see how we can make a practical use of this technology. All these rays, they're directed outwards. We can record the information about the position of these rays, their direction, and then we can project that information onto some other object. This is what this technology is all about. It's about recording information about these normals that are coming out of polygons and projecting them onto an object that has a similar shape but fewer polygons. And as a result, the object with a smaller number of polygons will look like a more detailed high poly object. Now let's see an example. We've created a high poly object. And it's a, a tile. The size 300 by 300 millimeters. It has these bulging elements and a high poly text with chamfers. Also, I made this depressed area here. This is a, a high poly object. So let's paint it one color to imitate a single mesh. This object can be a single mesh or it can be made of individual pieces. So let's say we need to copy this whole thing onto a map and then project it onto a low poly object. So our goal here is to have fewer polygons in this scene. This scene has 56,000 polygons and we want to project this object onto four polygons. And it should look equally realistic. So let's record this information about all these normals and smoothing groups. And we'll create a low poly plane of the same size for that. Let's call it low poly LP. And this object here is HP, which means high poly. So we put these two objects close to one another. This is very important. And next, we need to make sure the low poly object has texture coordinates. So we hit unwrap UVW map and then open UV editor to make sure these coordinates are in place. These are rectangular 
coordinates or it can be any other shape. Anyway, make sure to check the coordinates because they're crucial for the whole process. So we need to project our normal map onto these coordinates. So we convert the object to editable poly. Select the low poly object, then click rendering, bake to texture. And our goal is to project the normal map of our high poly object onto this low poly object. So we need to add a map that we're going to use. So we select normals from this from the list and click add. Now pay attention to this. If you're using Karana render or V-Ray, this teapot sort of icon won't be here. Also here in the list of maps, you have V-Ray normal map or Karana normal map. But these maps take longer to render and may cause various problems. So before we start rendering, we switch to scan line render. We'll be coming back to this setting later. All right, now we go to rendering, bake to texture. And as you can see, the teapot is in place. If instead of Skyline Render we had Karana, the teapot would be crossed out and we wouldn't be able to render the scene. All right, so we have a normal map. Next, we go to Projected Form setting and we select Pick From List. Here it is, our high poly object. Then we add our high poly object. This gray text that says club. And as I've already said, all the normals of our high poly object will be projected onto some kind of film. And this cage here, look how unevenly it lies. So we need to correct it. See? The projection modifier has been added to the modifier stack. So we'll be projecting the normals from the high poly object onto this violet film. And then from this film, the normals will be projected onto the low poly object. So this is how this technology works. We go to cage and find push percent. See, I'm changing the position of the cage. And let's adjust the push percent so that our cage lies as close as possible to the surface of our high poly object. This way we'll be able to record its normals in an accurate way. Okay, so we move the cage closer to the surface. Make sure to avoid overlapping though. If there's overlapping, information won't be recorded. In the viewport, we can see that the cage is lying too low. Let's shift it manually. Select the points and raise the cage. Okay, here's our cage. Once again, it's a plane onto which the high poly object will project its normals. And from there, the normals will be recorded onto the low poly object. The text setting is UV channel, its default value is 1. Our object also have one UV channel. We don't have several map projections, so we won't dwell on that. Texture size is at 2048 bit, it's good value. Now if you're working with a large object like some kind of statue or something like that, go for a larger size to avoid defects because they may appear in close-ups. For smaller objects, 2048 bits is enough, padding stands at 2, but we need it to be no less than 4 though, and I won't go into details why, it'll take a long time. Now file name is lp underscore normals. Here we select the path to store the map. I've already created a temp folder on, on the C, and we select it and select folder, and now everything's ready for baking.
Let's reposition the object so that we can see it clearly and click make. We'll be re recording over the old data, so we click override file. Done. One of the map uh, completed. Now let's click the file to see what we've got. And we got this map. It has some visible flaws though. This means the cage overlapped with some of the planes. Also, there is no text and no depressed area. Why is that? Well, let's see if all of our objects are attached into a single mesh. So we select the high poly object and see, and I see that it only consists of these semi-spheres. Actually, it's not uncommon when you find out that the objects you're trying to bake are not attached. Now we attach all the objects that we want to project onto the map. Check once again, enter HP here. And then we select pick from list and add our HP. And let's see if everything's okay. We can now see the projection map on our low poly object. Let's delete the modifier and select the low poly object once again. Then we hit rendering, bake to texture. Now we don't need to add the map, it's already added. And then we click pick from list and add our high poly object. Once we've done this, the projection modifier adds to the modifier list. Next, we need to adjust our cage in this grid here. We set the pot, uh, sorry, the push percent so that the cage lies as close to the surface as possible. Here the gap's too small, we switch to point selection and slightly raise the cage. Alright, and now let's try to bake the map again. But first let's check the settings. Here we have normals, here we pick the projection from the list, UV channel 1, texture size 2000, padding is 4, and the map name is LP normals. The map will be stored on disk C, tap folder, OK. And now we can click bake. We'll be recording over the previous map, so override file. And that's it. Let's take a look. Here's our violet map. It looks, it looks like these spheres are depressions and this area is a bulge. The club text also looks like a depression and that's not good, so this error has to do with the fact that the map records information about three directions or three coordinates, X, Y, and Z. In some 3D software, axes X and Y may swap places, so we need to correct this. When setting up a material in Karano, we need to change the direction of these axes and get a bulge instead of a depression. And now I'll show you how, to, uh, how this object is going to look with the Karano material and the map assigned to it. So we switch from scanline render to Karana. And then we go to Material Editor to create basic Karana material. Here we need to link Karana normal map to this bump slot. So we go to Maps, Karana, Karana normal. And we'll link Karana normal map to bump. And next we need to link our baked map. So we select Karana bitmap and then open LP normals. 
And so then we'll link it to the normal map. So this, this is the combination that we've got. We're working with a relief in the bomb channel. We're going to assign this material to our low poly plane. And let's move the plane to this side and create this instance copy. Next, we convert it to editable poly and assign our Corona material. It's created by default. And we're done with the material. We won't be making any finger adjustments. Sometimes you might need to adjust bump though. But not all the time. So let's close material editor for now. And let's add a basic Corona light so that we can see the relief in the viewport and render it. Next we add a standard free camera. Actually, now let's go for a Corona camera. Alright, that's done. And now let's switch to the camera view and start the interactive render. Also make sure that the camera is locked. And now we can watch the process. Let's make it a bit brighter. And now let's see what direction our depression and bulges have taken. All right, good. The material looks, I'm sorry, the material took the right direction. The letters are bulging. While this area here is definitely a depression. These semi-spheres are also bulging. Okay, now let's see what problems you might face. Now, after baking, you might need to flip the X and Y axis. So our map is colored. The X is red, Y is green. And see what happens if we flip these axes. The Y axis goes from left to right while the X axis goes from top to bottom. So we check flip red and our text as well as the semispheres become depressed. As for horizontal line in the center, it is now bulging. So we uncheck red flip and the normals are start, start to work correctly. All right, so what else? Let's see how the light source can affect our normals. So if, for example, we start moving the light, the shadow will start shifting, like in the bump map. It's some kind of pseudo, pseudo relief. So for example, if the light is here, the shadows are cast on this side. And if we shift the light here, the shadow appears on the other side. So if we had a plane consisting of four polygons and onto it projected a high poly surface consisting of 54,000 polygons, this technology has its limitations, of course. You can use, you can use it to project a, a relief that is too high. Take a look at this text here at its shadows. And this is how the text looks after we've assigned the map. Why is it so? Well, it has to do with the fact that the letters rise at 90 degrees, perpendicular to the surface. Their height is not recorded on the map. And also, the cage is located above. while the normals coming out of this side face are directed sideways. And as a result of that, the information about the side faces doesn't get recorded. We only get the information about the top chamfer. So in order to bake our tile correctly, we need to create a low poly geometry that will imitate this bulge. 
So once again, seeing that we won't be able to create a more bulging text than this one, we need to create a low poly bulge. This is where the read apology tool comes in. You take this high poly part and use the red apology tool to reduce the number of polygons. And then you bake a map of the high poly object and get a more naturally looking relief, a more naturally looking model. So I just kind of wanted to show you how it's done. I hope I've managed to explain it to you in a simple way. Now, here's one more thing I'd like to be uh, to focus on. 3ds Max might have problems baking these maps. The first 3D Max versions were terrible at that. There was a bunch of errors, and also baking takes up plenty of memory. So you won't be able to do that with 8 gigabytes of memory. 3ds Max will be constantly crashing. That's why many CGI artists prefer using external software. And we'll talk about one of those programs in the next video. Also, I'd like to remind you that this technology is not particularly used in 3D design. It's more common in the gaming industry. Also, it's used for VR projects where you need to project highly detailed objects onto low poly. So I hope you'll find this video clear and useful. Thanks for watching. Bye.